Good morning, everybody. My name is Pastor Pete. I serve the First United Methodist Church here in Brookings, South Dakota. And I want to greet you in the name of Jesus and thank you for joining us. It really makes no difference whether you are sitting in front of a computer, whether you're listening on a radio, or whether you're out camping at the lake. God is with all of us and we can worship God from wherever we are. We will sing, we will pray, we will read from Scripture. Our call to worship, for those who are following on screen, I invite you to read the response that comes from Psalm 13. I will prompt you read the parts in bold print. From Psalm 13. Consider and answer me, O Lord my God. Light up my eyes, lest I sleep the sleep of death. But I have trusted in your steadfast love. My heart shall rejoice in your salvation. I will sing to the Lord because he has dealt bountifully with me. Now, let us pray. O God of the hot sun and God of the prairie wind, God of the noisy birds and God of the silence, when you speak to us, you do so in ways we may not expect but cannot ignore. Allow us in the midst of this time of frantic noise and eerie stillness to listen again to the wind and to the earth, to the gentle whisper of you calling our name. And may we hear in your voice words of love and hope, the good news of your presence with us still. Amen. Amen. And so we're going to sing together. I'm grateful to Joan for having put a hymn together. I invite you to sing with me from the Methodist hymnal. Our first reading comes from Revelation 21, verses 1 to 8. New, the new heaven and the new earth. I saw a new heaven and a new earth. The first heaven and the first earth had disappeared, and so had the sea. Then I saw new Jerusalem, that holy city, coming down from God in heaven. It was like a bride dressed in her wedding gown and ready to meet her husband. I heard a loud voice shout from the throne, God's home is now with his people. He will live with them and they will be his own. Yes, God will make his home among his people. He will wipe all tears from their eyes and there will be no more death, suffering, crying or pain. 
these things of the past are gone forever. Then the one sitting on the throne said, I am making everything new. Write down what I have said. My words are true and can be trusted. Everything is finished. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will freely give water from the life-giving fountain to everyone who is thirsty. All who win the victory will be given these blessings. I will be their God and they will be my people. But I will tell you what will happen to cowards and to everyone who is unfaithful or dirty-minded or who murders or is sexually immoral or uses witchcraft or worships idols or tells lies. They will be thrown into that lake of fire and burning sulfur. This is the second death. Here ends the reading. The scripture reading is from John 14, verse 1 through to 8. Jesus said to his disciples, Don't be worried. Have faith in God and have faith in me. There are many rooms in my father's house. I wouldn't tell you this unless it was true. I'm going there to prepare a place for each of you. After I have done this, I will come back and take you with me. Then we will be together. You know the way to where I am going. Thomas said, Lord, we don't even know where you are going. How can we know the way? I am the way, the truth, and the life, Jesus answered. Without me, no one can go to the Father. If you had known me, you would have known the Father. But from now on, you do know him, and you have seen him. Philip said, Lord, show us the Father. That is all we need. Lord God, as we reflect on the scriptures, grant us your grace to hear you speak to us. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our heart be acceptable in your sight, our God and our Redeemer. Amen. We have started a new preaching series where we look at the Lord's Prayer. I have also written a devotional booklet which you can pick up at the church, a booklet that gives you a daily reading and then gives you a reflection for each week around the Lord's Prayer, which we started last week, which was Father's Day, which might be enough clue for you to guess what last week's was. Last week was Our Father. This week we continue Our Father who art in heaven. Our Father in heaven. So here's the question for today. So where exactly is heaven? And I can almost sense those of you at home who have small children, hoping they don't look at you for an answer. Because this is one of those unanswerable questions. And yet I am going to tackle it today. Not necessarily in a way that gives you a location because I'm going to do theology rather than geography. You see, in the time that Jesus taught this prayer, the disciples of Jesus would have understood heaven to be just up there, just above the clouds in what they would have called the firmament. The world view at the time of Jesus thought of the earth as a flat disk. A flat disk with a dome that went over the earth and just above the clouds lived God who looked down on the earth, looked after his people, protected his people, made sure the rains fell, made sure the sun shone. And so when they prayed to heaven, they would almost have looked up and expected God to receive their prayers which is much more complicated today because we know that the earth isn't flat. 99.9% .9 of the people on earth know that the earth isn't flat. And it makes it difficult when we want to look up to heaven because people living in the United States of America will look up 
And people living in the southern hemisphere, in Australia or South Africa, will look up. But when the earth is a globe, your looking up will be in different directions. Even more complicated, because we've been up into space and we've sent telescopes up into space that can look across billions of years. And those telescopes and those explorers have not found heaven just up there, just above the clouds. But if you watch a sports star who scores points, the first thing that sports star does is look up into the sky to say thank you to God. Or if they desperate for points, they'll cast their eyes to the heavens. Um, when someone dies, we do hope they're up there looking down on us. And our hymns speak of heaven being up there. The Christmas carol once in Royal David City, there's a line that says, He came down to earth from heaven. So when we pray the Lord's Prayer, when we say, Our Father who art in heaven, how do we respond? Where is heaven? And I want to start by pointing out that heaven cannot be some place else, as if God is in heaven and we are here on earth. Because the scriptures are very clear that God is here with us. In fact, those same Christmas carols sing of God Emmanuel, God with us, the God who comes to live alongside of us. The teaching of the Psalms, the teaching of Jesus and of Paul speaks of a God who is alongside of us. The teaching of my Sunday school teacher who speaks of God, and she tapped on my chest and said, God who's here inside your heart. So allow me to take us to the best explanation I can work with, to take us to the book of Revelation, the last book of the Bible. A book that was written during the time of the Roman persecution of Christians. In the first century, Christians of Rome lived in the catacombs. They hid in the graveyards of the city because they were being persecuted. They had been blamed for many of the social ills that had fallen on Rome. The final one being that they were blamed for the great fire of Rome. And so they hid in the graveyards because the superstitious people who hunted them down wouldn't have wanted to go into a graveyard to look for them. The letter Revelation written by Bishop John, a bishop who's in exile on the island of Patmos, writes a pastoral letter to the Christians to give them courage, to say to them, hang in there. God is with you. And in this letter... He speaks of a new heaven and a new earth. He says God is making all things new, not for people who live somewhere else, but God is making all things new here on earth. The new Jerusalem happens here on earth. Revelation 21.3 I heard a loud voice shout from the throne, God's home is is now with his people. He will live with them. They will be his own. Yes, God will make his home among his people. So God is not somewhere else. God is here amongst his people. And Bishop John at pains to say to those early Christians, do not be afraid. God has not abandoned you. God is with you. This is the key to a biblical understanding of heaven. heaven. Heaven doesn't begin somewhere else. Heaven begins here on earth. We will be part of building heaven with the renewing of this earth, literally creating heaven here on earth. And I know if I was preaching to you as a congregation, you'd be interrupting me at this point and saying, but hang on, I have a question for you. What about when we die? Do we go to heaven? 
And I want to answer with those words of Jesus that we read earlier in the Gospel of John. John 14, verse 2. Jesus says, There are many rooms in my Father's house. I wouldn't tell you this unless it was true. I am going there to prepare a place for each of you. And after I've done this, I will come back and take you with me. Then we will be together. The assurance of Jesus that when we die, we will be with God and we will be personally accompanied by Jesus. But if you remember, I said earlier, we are doing theology, not geography. Where that is, is beyond human explanation. The theology says we will be with God. But between the moment of our death and now, we can already be part of heaven. You see, heaven begins whenever people begin to live out the values of God. Our challenge is to be God's presence here on earth, to encourage each other in our Christian walk. Whenever the risen Christ, whenever the risen Christ is invited into someone's life, heaven becomes visible. And our aim should be to bring heaven to every corner of this earth through our Christ-filled actions. I take us back to Scripture. Revelation 21 verse 5, Then the one sitting on the throne said, I am making everything new. This is serious stuff. God says, I'm renewing the earth. God also says, and I'm unhappy with those who refuse to be part of the renewal. Revelation 21 verse 8. But I will tell you what will happen to cowards and to everyone who's unfaithful or dirty-minded or who murders or who is sexually immoral or uses witchcraft or worships idols or tells lies. They will be thrown into that lake of fire and burning sulfur. This is the second death. Beware. Beware those who live as if there is no God. Beware of those who live as if God is not renewing our earth. We who follow Jesus are called to be different. We are to push back against that non-heavenly stuff that surrounds us. Revelation 21, 7. All who win the victory will be given these blessings. I will be their God. They will be my people. God is with us. We are the people of God. We will have victory. So let's take hands with each other as we claim this earth for heaven. Let me, let me give a few examples. And there are many. I've just picked three at random. When we see white people cursing black people, we're reminded that heaven is open for all people, and so we will work for an earth that welcomes everyone. We will work for an earth where black lives do matter, because that is heaven. When we see people, my second example, when we see people of one political party cursing people of another political party, we are reminded of the words of Jesus who says, In my Father's house are many rooms. All are welcome. Your political loyalties need to be put to one side because everyone has value in God's kingdom. There is room for both Democrat and Republican because this is the kingdom of God. There is room for both gay people and straight people. There is room for American and Chinese, for European and African. There's room for you and for me. And all of this begins when my heart is changed. Heaven literally begins in my heart. And I recognize the need to pray for God to change my heart, that I might become as welcoming as heaven. I need to pray for my family and for my home, that, that, that heaven will be glimpsed in the way we conduct our home. 
We need to pray for our town, that heaven begin to take root in our town. To pray for our nation, that God's heaven begin to be seen in the way we relate to each other. To pray for our world, that our Heavenly Father might be visible amongst us. Often, often this involves addressing systems that act against the ways of heaven. I come from South Africa, where I grew up with a system called apartheid. This system taught me that black people are inferior to white people. And when I surrendered my heart to Jesus, I had to also unlearn the system in which I was birthed. I, as a Christian, I had to work at dismantling the system in my heart and also had to work at dismantling the system in the country because heaven welcomes all people. Heaven challenged the values I'd grown up with and transformed me and enabled me to discover those words of Jesus in my father's house is room for everyone. Jesus says in John 14 verse 6, we read those words earlier, I am the way and the truth and the life. Let us all begin to establish the way of Jesus here on earth. Let us, let us establish the truth of Jesus in our life together. Let us live the life of Jesus in our laws and in our speech and in our conduct so that we can truly pray, our Father who inhabits heaven in my heart. So I'm going to invite us to do two things. I am going to take us into a prayer. We are literally going to receive the Lord's Prayer, but it'll be a video. A video made up of a range of people around the world praying the Lord's Prayer. A wonderful reminder that God's heaven is for all people. It's made by a friend of mine who's in Australia. He's an Anglican priest. And he's collected voices from around the world. And as we hear the Lord's Prayer, be reminded, this is what heaven looks like. And then after that, we will sing a song. It's a song written by Graham Kendrick, who's a British Christian songwriter. A song that says, heaven is in my heart. So, so let's pause for this prayer and allow the Lord's Prayer to hold us today. Father in heaven, Father Vor, Father of all. Отец наш на небесах. Or not her er to er nav. Vater unser in Himmel. Malitva pasledniak optinskih starcev. Pai nosu ki stais no cel. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. 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 And we forgive us those who trespass against, against us. As we forgive those and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Us not into temptation, for thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, and the glory forever and ever. Thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. O Kimato, we call you a Kiapakawaya. Amen. 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 
Amin. 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 Heaven is in my heart And in His presence joy abounds Heaven is in my heart The light of holiness surrounds Heaven is in my heart ooh, 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 ooh. Heaven is in my heart in my heart and Christ is the foundation stone heaven is in my heart he will return to take us home heaven is in my heart the spirit and the bright say come heaven is in my heart ooh, 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 ooh. heaven is in Thank you for joining us today. I trust that Sunday will be a blessed day for you. I want to thank you for continuing to support us with your offerings. Because of you, we as a church can continue to serve this town. I do want to honor your gifts by praying for them. You can give online, you can do a money transfer, you can drop off via the post office. Um, so let's pray together. Lord God, I pray your blessing upon the gifts that are given by this church, asking that they in turn might become a blessing to others. So receive the gifts that we offer, for they are offered in Jesus' name. Amen. And so may God bless you and keep you. May the love of God enfold you, and may the presence of his Spirit Bless you with strength for this coming week. Amen. Go in peace. Amazing.
amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found, was blind. 